Thanks so much. Thank you. That was great. I wish there was opening music at every part of my life. Hi, who's been to Lowe's? Good, thank you. It is worthwhile, we, we have awesome stuff. Anyways, the only reason I give talks is so I can have more Twitter followers. So this is, uh, this is my handle, this is the Lowe's Innovation Labs. So has anyone heard of the Lowe's Innovation Labs before? Good, thank goodness. Uh, we're trying, we're trying to get the word out there. You know, we build stuff you wouldn't expect a Lowe's to build. So everything you're gonna see, AR and VR, we have the most expansive uh, platform you know, out there, and we're working with a lot of different things which we're gonna talk about in a minute, but it's not just AR and VR. Um, we're, we're trying to transform the company. All right, so when people, when the neuron fires uh, around VR and AR, Lowe's usually isn't the second neuron to fire. Is that fair to say? Um, but, but really, it should, right? So if you look at the genesis of a lot of new technologies, it usually starts with a core group of users. Like I've been coming to AWE for a number of years now, and that's kind of what AWE is. And then and it starts to expand. And only when it be, leaves gaming or kind of that core user and becomes more ubiquitous does it really start to take off. Um, and, I, and Lowe's being a part of that it it fits into it nicely. But before I get into like what we're doing and what we've done and why, uh, it makes sense to talk about how we perceive things. So this is the world in which we live. So forgive the boilerplate slides. I think it's really important for, to think about why Lowe's would do this. We live in this world of change and time. What happens is, though, we're all just taught implicitly and explicitly that if we work really hard, if you study really hard, you individually or your organization will kind of go up this imaginary line to we never know, but it's usually to success, right? The problem is, is that if you only are gradually improving your product or service or your thing, it's the linear path to doom. And especially in our industry, the retail industry, I mean, we see that. Like, even as a kid, there are a lot of brands that just aren't around anymore. You know, I used to get excited Friday night to go to, re go, go to Blockbuster and go stand in line to get the latest, uh, latest movie. That's just not a thing anymore, right? For all kinds of different reasons. These aren't bad people that are going on that linear path to doom. This is, these are good, diligent, hardworking people that are on this linear path. They don't even know it. And the reason is because we live in an exponential world. We don't live in a linear world. And these all sound like, oh, cool, academic, wah, wah, whatever, whatever. But we've seen that especially in augmented and virtual reality. You know, five years ago, six years ago, no one was really talking about AR or VR in a meaningful way. And now everyone's doing it. I mean, everyone. There's a Chick-fil-A cardboard. It, we, everyone's doing it, okay? And so what happens is, sorry, Chick-fil-A. I love, I love that chicken, but it doesn't really make sense. Okay, so ch change today is exponential, right? And especially, like I said, in our industry. These are the kind of headlines we see every day. These doom and gloom retail mageddon. Yes, there is a retail mageddon. There's a mageddon for everything. And the response from big organizations, especially in this valley, is to do, oh my gosh, we're getting disrupted. What do we do? Uh, let's create an innovation lab. If you drive up and down between San Jose all the way to Oakland, you will see a microcosm of every single major company on the planet. And what do they do? They usually hire a guy that looks like me. Hmm, bearded, strange haircut. And we, and we, and we throw, let's get a bunch of 3D printers and augmented and virtual reality. And then we put QR codes in our head for some unknown reason. And then, surprise, surprise, nothing happens. You know, for all of the VR and AR and disruptive innovation talk and all the money and effort that's thrown at this thing, you would think we would have some big things coming out of big companies spending all this money and talking all about it. Where are they? Where's all the stuff? Meanwhile, big companies are still freaked out by two kids in a garage somewhere writing some janky code on some open source platform. It doesn't make any sense at all. Why is that? And it's because we're not thinking about it the right way. Because anything that's truly new and different there's a deceptive disappointment part of this exponentiality. AR and VR fit smack dab into that three to four to five to six years ago. You know, there was AR and VR when I was a kid. I grew up in the 90s. And they were in these things called arcades. Millennials don't know what that is. But there were these things called arcades, and you would go, and it was horrible. You see these like weird polygons that would flip by, and like the, the heads-up display was like this big. Um, and it was meant to destroy your nose. But that's, that's what it was. And then it just, as mysteriously as it came, it disappeared. But it didn't disappear. It fell off the radar of most people, but there was a core group of people, people at AWE, that were actually working on this stuff. Until almost magically, 
the reality and the technology and the, broke free of this imaginary curve or this imaginary line. And boom, here we are in this disruptive opportunity where you have literally everyone trying to figure out how their stuff plays into AR and VR, but they don't really know why. So there's this overabundance, this overexuberance. What you really want to do is be playing, down, building down here in the deceptive disappointment part of the curve so that you can take advantage of this disruptive opportunity. Does that make sense? So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to identify what to work on when everyone's making fun of it so that we can figure out how it really plays for us and then, and then we have that opportunity. And the other part that's missing too, and I think that it plays into like all this corporate innovation nonsense, is that, so this is an academic study that was actually done where they had a, they went through all thousands and thousands of yearbook photos from 1900 to today, and they tried to see if our faces had changed in North America. And honestly and truly, the only thing they discovered is that we actually just smile more in pictures. This is a true finding. Um, we're not happier, we just smile more uh, gradually over time. So we're not changing. Our operating system and our hardware is not changing very fast. You can talk about neuroplasticity and all this other stuff, but who we are is not changing very quick. This is at the same time the telephone, the prime communication device at the same time. So you go from this rotary horrific thing that was probably in Little House on the Prairie all the way to the supercomputer you have in your pocket right now and don't think about it. So what's, this is just one example, right? There are all kinds of things swirling around us, but meanwhile, we're the same. And this isn't design thinking that I'm gonna talk about or anything else. This is something more innate in who we are. So, when the aliens finally come down or reveal themselves, anyone want to make an announcement now? Lizard people, are you there? Oh, truck, check the internet if you haven't heard that's funny. Anyway, when the aliens finally come down, one of the weirdest things, the probably weirdest thing about humans is that we love stories. We are hardwired to love and receive stories. If you take a step back and think about it, if you have a good day, if you have a bad day, what do you do? You open a book, you turn on Hulu, and you let stories wash over you. You'll watch the same story over and over and over again. It makes no sense. It doesn't provide medicine or shelter or any of those things that should drive us, according to Maslow. But stories are something that we will literally sacrifice money for and time and food for a story. And then we communicate shorthand, really complex things in story, right? It's like our compression code. It's like the lightsaber of this. It's like the replicator of that. We do that all the time. We don't even think twice about it. So when you get in these big organizations, it was shocking to me coming out of academia that no one was using story to be able to figure out how the world could work and then to communicate those very complex things to other people. So we started to do it. And we created a whole system and rigor around it um, that is a terrible name, but it's very descriptive called narrative-driven innovation. That's how we got there. So before I get to the VR, AR piece, this is a repeatable process. So we've done this for everything from creating the first autonomous robots that are in use in all the Northern California that speak multiple languages, they're full use, they work. I don't, has anyone tried Lobot? No? Go check it out, local Lowe's. First store in space, the first commercial manufacturing off the planet was a Lowe's. This is really, really in the International Space Station right now, printing Lowe's tools for the, for the astronauts. Exosuits, all kinds of other things. But the first one we ever did was virtual and augmented reality. So in this, what we did is we hire professional published science fiction writers, we give them all of our marketing research and trend data, and then we send them out in different directions, two years, five years, 10 years on the road, and then give them a location where that story will take place, Cleveland, Ohio, for instance. And they sift through what possible probable permutations could exist at that moment in time and create an actual story of how that would play out. And it's not some hokey corporate story, it's like Back to the Future Part Two, but over and over and over again. And then you can triangulate, as somebody like us, what the reality might look like and how that might actually play out in someone's life. So in this story, and then we turn these into some sort of manifestation. So these are real short stories, with characters, conflict, a narrative arc. And then that way, we turn those into comic books and then I literally pass them out to our CEO, Fortune 50 CEO at Lowe's and his direct staff, and we read comic books. That's our strategic document. And then they tell us what they believe, they don't believe, and then what to go build. We did this five years ago. No one was talking about AR. This is before Oculus Rift came out on Kickstarter. The world is very different. In this story, there's a couple redesigning their kitchen, wearing what we would call a heads-up display right now using augmented reality. Did not exist. Now it seems incredibly obvious at the time it didn't. They said, go build it. So we did. The first thing that we could build, the best thing possible, I'm horribly embarrassed of this now, is a 30 by 30 square foot box that we put in two stores in Canada. 
And we learned a lot of stuff, like how do you serve up 500 3D assets of toilets that look pretty much the same with providing choice without overwhelming people? No one had figured that out before. And we figured out all this other stuff. And this is what it would look like. You looked through this iPad, and you had this AR experience. But what we learned really quickly is that we needed new methods uh, to be able to measure these new tech, this new tech. So my background's in behavioral science and in neuroscience. And so I persuaded my PhD advisor at the time to allow us to try to take some of these tools and try to turn them into a solution. So we literally built, Lowe's built an applied neuroscience company in Denmark called Neurons Inc. Anyone can use it. Um, Facebook announced that they use it. Everyone uses it now. And it measures four things, which I won't go into. But basically, it's all around creating intuitive experiences beyond, hey, customer, do you like it or not like it? That's not very helpful for me as a developer. And these are all of the things that we've done. And I'm sorry that it's not showing up correctly here. But we went back from 2013, where we had that first hollow room, all these different iterations along the way with Oculus and Cardboard and early Tango and HoloLens and Tango 2, which you might have saw our announcement at Google I.O., and Hollow Room How To, which is at the, uh, in the play, playground room, playroom, and then Lowe's Vision, which is attached to Tango as well. And creating these tools is all about helping people feel in flow versus not in flow. So you can make it work technically, but it fails because it's too complicated, it's not complicated enough, all of those diagnostic measures we get through applied neuroscience that you can't get in any way. And this was supposed to be a video that was going to blow your mind. Just imagine what your life would be like had you actually seen this video. Amazing. But anyways, <laughs> but here's some of the results. And we've never shared these results before. But everything we do, Lowe's is a big, giant organization. We only do things if it actually is going to move the needle in some form or fashion, if we actually believe it will. So 55% strongly agree this will help me better visualize the final look of my bathroom. That was at this early, early phase when the thing barely worked. And I mean barely. And then the next phase, we learned concierge versus self-service. Some really basic things. Do you want people to drive it or do you want to drive it? And another awesome slide that would totally blow your mind, but it's just not here. And even things like in-store navigation we're able to do using Tango which would allow you to do, it does, this really works, computer vision based only, no BLE or any of that stuff, real computer vision that you can use your Google Tango to be able to navigate the store in real time. So this is an aggregation of a lot of neuroscience work over time. Our comparison is not other VR and AR. It is all against the humble in-store vignette. You know, when you go into a Lowe's and there's those kitchen sinks and Everyone turns the knobs, and I don't know why, because there's no water that's going to come out, but everyone does it. Um, we were comparing against that, because that is the visualization system now. So if you take an aggregate of all the VR and AR that we tested that I showed you over here, this is how it tests on cognitive load. Still overloading, but not nearly as bad as, as the vignette. And the scale might seem not so huge, but to move it that far is pretty crazy. But when we tested Tango, Tango was far and away scarily perfect for where, where we are right now. And that's why Lowe's has gone so deep into Tango. We sell the Fab 2 Pro. You can go to Lowe's and buy a Fab 2 Pro. And even crazier enough, we sold out of the Fab 2 Pro with no marketing in four days. Who is buying a Fab 2 Pro from Lowe's? Anyways, we've met some of these people. Eh, they're interesting. OK, so. And we continue to go. So this is the wonderful Jasmine Evans. So we went from visualization to learning. So in this VR and AR experience, which you can try it downstairs, we are actually doing learning. And in this, we found that 73, people are 73% more likely to take on a, v, a project uh, when they learned in VR than watching, in, watching a highly produced YouTube video, which is the way that everybody learns everything for their home, right? But what we really learned is that content is king. And I'll be quick, too, because I'm running out of time. Content is king, and it didn't exist. There was scarcity there. Where's the content going to come that are going to power all these things? We sell a lot of stuff. And as you can see here, we had to hand build all these things. There's just no way to scale that and make it right. And with all of this awesome hardware and firmware that's being developed, where's all the content that's going to come that's going to service this? The internet sucks without cat videos. Where, where's, the, where's the content going to come from? So we built it ourselves. This is a 3D scan. We have our own proprietary patented 3D scanning process we've never talked about openly before. This is sort of an announcement. In Seattle with our team, we built from scratch. And this is one of the scans that came out of it. And high, high resolution, incredible focus. And then we actually have it on, a, on a, an allied brand of ours called The Mine that Lowe's owns. It's, it's an online only um, store. 
and you can go on and click through them, and you can see what those 3D images will be. So it's not just for VNR AR. The things that we're learning, everyone talks about moonshots. There's all kinds of great stuff that comes from the moonshot that has nothing to do with space, really. Tang, where would our life be without Tang? Uh, the microwave, all that good stuff. And this is the same thing. We're developing these assets for VR and AR, but it also has application right today. And I can't get to the specific number and tell you, but I can tell you it's very significant how high the, all of the measures go up the second you put on a 3D asset online. It changes significantly the behavior of the customer in a positive way. So we're jumping all into this, and we know that VR and AR from our applied neuroscience, but then also what we're seeing from 3D assets in the real world uh, through purchase and other things on the mind now. All right, there's a lot there. But change is exponential. Did any of you know that Lowe's is doing all this stuff? Very few, very few people. All right, all right. Some people, yeah. But that's the beauty of it. Anyone can do anything. It's all part of the why and how and then rallying people together to be able to make it happen. If you want to learn more about what we're doing with 3D assets, go to, this, go to lowesinnovationlabs.com backslash lil3d and also come talk to us at our booth. We want to partner with you. We're here to work with you. That's why we're here. Um, we are committed to this future happening faster and at a lows. Thank you. Thank you.